When I was very young, the Earth Empire controlled the skies. The Tsar and his battle fleet saw everything, knew everything, punished everything. Those of us in the colonies never imagined there could be another way. But then, the real slaughter began. Now there are thousands like me, veterans of the League of Free Worlds, who yearn to fight against the Savage Empire. victory at the Battle of Benay gave us confidence and the time to strengthen our fleet. And it gave our leader, the Father, some reason to believe in the future. Welcome to the League of Free Worlds Information System. Hey guys, and welcome to a new Let's Play, or rather, Select a new desired option. Thanks, computer. Or at least a new replay. My god, this is one of my first ever Let's Plays that I recorded all the way back in 2014, which is pretty incredible. Uh, so that's seven years ago. Dude. So, Colony Wars, one of my favourite games uh, on the PlayStation, in fact, one of my favourite series, unfortunately, uh, a series that has literally been forgotten, made by Psygnosis, uh, they actually made Colony Wars 1, which is this one, obviously, they made Colony Wars 2, Vengeance, they made Colony Wars 3, Red Sun, all of them were fantastic games. Uh, space shooter genre, a game that is all but extinct these days, you know. There are a few examples on PC, but they are far and few between, sadly, um, you know. Now, Psygnosis also made a G Police 1 and 2 which we also did way back when in the day. Uh, my old LPs of those games, uh, including this one, are a load of old shit, so this has been a long time coming. Uh, emulation has moved on leaps and bounds since then, as has um, my uh, PC. <laughs> my god. Uh, I think I had an old AMD Venom back then when I was doing this and uh, we had loads of technical uh, difficulties with the emulator and of course we didn't have anything like OBS back then we were using fraps to record uh, but this game is rather unique and uh, so are the other Colony Wars games in fact um, whereas we, we start off playing as the underdogs we're playing as the League of Free Worlds against this evil empire that has taken over the whole galaxy and uh, everybody is slaved Essentially, all the colonies are, are slaved to the the Empire. Kind of like how the UNSC is in Halo. Yes, the damn colonial insurrectionist bastards. But hey, that's, that's something else for another day. Uh, but this game is quite interesting. Because it has a fairly decent story. Apart from the fact that the father who uh, is in charge of the League of Free Worlds as some mystical figure who nobody knows who he is or, you know, anything like that. So how he's uh, dictating orders and controlling battle groups and, um, you know, sending orders to the fleets. I don't know. But, you know, this is a PlayStation 1 game. Uh, but as the story unfolds in this game, one of the more unique aspects is if we fail a mission... The game doesn't end. The story changes. Yeah, how about that? 
How about that for a PlayStation 1 game? We don't even have games that have that now. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. There's so many different endings and so many different ways this game can go. And we're going to be exploring everything. Um, but we're going to start off nice and easy like, unfortunately, with the training. We're going to go... Ah, there was also a, a really deep kind of lore to this game. Uh, with system database and the craft database, there's a lot here. This series could really do with uh, having a comeback. It's never going to happen. I know that, you know. But there's enough here to create something quite interesting. Anyway, let's hit up training. We are a new pilot, fresh out of uh, boot camp, I suppose. And we need to go through here to get our wings. So, let's start with the basics. This training mission will allow you to become accustomed to your craft's control system. You will be able to fly freely in any direction in airspace close to Ben Hay. After a short while, a jump gate will be visible from your craft. You are required to maneuver the craft until you are within range of the jump gate. This will complete the mission. So, we are in orbit around Benay, which is one of the planets in the Galenaya system. The Galenaya system is the last bastion of freedom from the Empire. And uh, if you remember to the intro that we just saw, uh, the thing that kicked off and united this League of Free Worlds was a battle that recently occurred uh, near Benay. Um, as far as we know, there was some kind of conflict. And the League actually defeated the Empire, which uh, was the catalyst for this main um, war that's about to kick off. Anyway, enough about that. We need to train. Now, this game actually has some really nice effects for the PlayStation 1. Some seriously nice particle effects. Yes, particle effects on the PlayStation 1. It really is something quite special. Welcome to your craft, pilot. Use this time to familiarize yourself with the controls. Refer to your training manual for further instructions. Here we are. your free flight, maneuver your craft towards the jump gate, which is highlighted on your targeting radar. One thing quite special about this game was the sense of scale. We'd never really seen anything like that until this point, uh, you know. Now, we have no weapons, we can just move, but we can get a look at our HUD. Um, so basically, uh, on the left side of the map there, we have the two circles. We have the thin circle, and then we have the, um, the, the full circle in the middle. So that is our shield strength. Once our shields fail, it goes down to our hull strength. Shields don't recharge, and neither does the hull. So, you know, what you've got is what you've got. Um, now below that is our speed indicator. Like so, whether you're going forwards or backwards. Uh, this game does not support analog control, from what I can remember. So, you know, we're stuck with D-pads, but that's fine. It works well enough. Now over the other side, uh, on the right, we have the same shield indicator and hull indicator there, which dictates enemy strength. Uh, and under that, we have the lightning bolt. That's how much um, energy a target has, because we can disable targets in this using EMP weapons and stuff like that. It's really cool. Anyway, oh, also, the music in this game is fantastic. The studio that did the music for this is actually quite famous, and for some reason, I can't think of who did it. Uh, but it was pretty big. I, I will find out and uh, mention them in the next video, as long as I remember. But obviously, this game is looking a lot nicer now, because we've got it blown up on a, on a really good duck station emulator with loads of uh, image enhancements and blah, blah, blah. But this was a really good looking game for the PlayStation 1 and Colony Wars 2 kicked it up a, quite a significant notch and then uh, Colony Wars Red Sun really boosted the graphics through the stratosphere. That's one thing that was cool with the earlier consoles, you know, you saw the launch games and when the machine was in its final, you know, final year, 
and they were squeezing every ounce of juice out of that system, you know, it was like another generational leap. They really did squeeze every drop of juice out of those systems, and it was fun to see the games evolve. Basic but disciplined control of your craft will be required to successfully complete this mission, in which you must fly through a series of rings. As your craft passes through each ring in the correct sequence, the ring will change color. I see. Once your craft has passed through all rings in the correct sequence, a jump gate will open. Head oh. for this to end the mission. Okay, so these jump gates can actually be quite hard to see. Also, I used to love the ship design in this game. There's quite a few different ships. Uh, and that's something that gets uh, even... Uh, well, much more expanded in the later games. So, it, this is quite easy. You can't really fuck this up. Head for the next ring. So essentially, we just got to fly through these rings, and unfortunately, it goes on for quite a little bit, but it's not too bad. Now, the flight mechanics in this game are really quite interesting as well. There's a nice amount of momentum to your ship. You really can swing it around and throw it around. There's some interesting physics in this game, you know? It really did put a lot of effort. See, as you can see, the momentum there, if we switch the engines off... We still drift and glide around. It really is fun to just throw these ships around uh, whilst I crash into the ring. But you can see the particle effects, um, you know, the stars and debris in space flowing by the uh, cockpit there, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, we're not done with the particle effects. There is a lot of them. There are some criticisms of this game, but we'll get into those as we uh, get through the game. Okay, just keep following the rings. Rings of destiny. All I can think of is Halo. By the rings! That meme, if you've seen that meme, that meme's brilliant. Oof. Now I'm all ready for Halo Infinite. I have uh, just finished the Divine Winds book which leads right up to essentially where Halo Infinite is going to start um, on the arc. There's a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot going on on that there arc. And I can't wait to dive into that. See the Banished again, the Spirit of Fire, and then you've got uh, other sections and remnants of the Covenant there. Oh, and see what Cortana's up to. Yeah, there's uh, there's there's going to be a lot to it. Uh, now it was the 20th anniversary of the Xbox yesterday, and they did launch. All rings traversed. Nice. Head for the jump gate to complete the mission. They did launch um, the Halo Infinite multiplayer. It is in beta. Uh, it's, uh, it's it took us 23 hours, but. I have downloaded uh, the beta multiplayer on my Series X and I tried to get into a few games. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> uh, we were rubber banding all over the place, so I guess, I guess I'm just not going to be able to play Halo <laughs> on my internet. Shocker, right? I know. Never mind. One day we will uh, be out of broadband Tight poverty. Tight craft control will be necessary to negotiate the busy spaceport in this training mission. A drone craft will follow a course through a spaceport in the Benet zone. Closely pursue the drone, which we highlighted on your scanner, as it approaches a jump gate. Avoid other vessels. Enter the jump gate to end the mission. You got a boss. Now, if I remember correctly, I think like my first three videos of this uh, in my original LP, I don't think I even had a mic for. I mean, dude, we're going way back. When that dickhead Sega fan was around. Ugh. Remember him? Target Jesus. The drone in front of your ship. Yep, Is so there's our drone. You should keep the drone visible at all times. Yeah, we got it, we got it. 
We got the drone. Literally right up its arsehole. Luckily it's got a little green light, so we're not going to miss it. Now, I wouldn't say this is really a busy spaceport, but sure, we'll, we'll buy it. I think the boss just wants us to, uh, you know, abide by his strict rules for now. That's fine, we'll bite. Hopefully soon we'll be uh, having a crack at those uh, empire bastards. I think that will come fairly soon. Yeah, I love the story in this game. I love the fact that, you know, um, depending on how well you play, totally affects the, uh, the the story and the progression. And they really did put a lot into this. And you know, it was games like this that got me really hyped as a kid for the future of gaming. Uh, my mind was just swelling with all sorts of thoughts and ideas of what gaming was going to be like in the future. And I've said this before, you know, the sheer excitement that we had for the future of gaming. Um, and, well, what we all kind of thought we were going to get as kids, uh, and what we have got, well, yeah, I mean... If it's not a third-person shooter, or a sports game, a racing game, or a first-person shooter, I mean, that's, that's basically what mainstream gaming is these days. AAA gaming, I should say. And let's not forget, all these games seem to launch broken, and... Uh, recently bought the GTA trilogy. Less said about that, the better. And Cyberpunk tried to, well, bought that when that first came out. What a fucking shit show that was. I still haven't touched it since uh, I had my fourth game ending bug, which happened in the launch week, I suppose. Uh, GTA is, the trilogy is just an absolute fucking mess. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't really get that excited about games these days, sadly. Um, the one, the few that I have been pretty hyped for and bought have been absolute dog shit on release. Uh, but hey, we've still got these classics, man. Well done. You have passed your flight training. Now move on to combat training missions. And one of the best things that was announced yesterday on the Xbox uh, 20 anniversary stream is 70 new backwards compatible titles. 33 of which heavily enhanced for the new systems. Beautiful. You love to see it. <clears throat> Definitely looking forward to going through some of those again. The Fear Trilogy. Max Payne Trilogy. Time splitters. What? Time splitters. My god, we've got some bangers in there, alright. Okay. This training mission will allow you to use basic weapons to shoot a number of static targets. Occasionally, a target may be protected by a shield. You will have to switch from conventional to anti-shield lasers in order to destroy the shield. Before switching back to conventional lasers, to destroy the target. Once all targets are destroyed, a jump gate will open. Approach the jump gate to end the mission. Okay, so this is the rub of this game. We have two types of lasers. We have AS or anti-shield lasers which burn shields away but they don't actually damage the hull. And we have our standard lasers which do a very small amount of damage to shields but they destroy the hull. It's an interesting mechanic that Colony Wars carries through. And it's cool. It does mix things up a little bit. I'm trying to think, actually, what the last modern game was that I played. Oh, I did play the remake of... Um, Locate the targets using yeah, your we're on it. Destroy all humans. That was good fun. I enjoyed that. Okay, so training drone. 
So there's our shield laser. You can see by the fact that he's sparking, uh, he has no shields. So switch up. Decimate. Absolutely decimate the guy. See the particles though? They're really cool. Now you can see that because we're scanning this dude, uh, he has no shields. You can see because uh, the thin outer ring is not on the display. So we're just going to light him up with the lasers. Now you can see that we have another um, meter on the left there that goes up and down as we fire. That's how much charge our lasers have or I don't know maybe they're overheating maybe the capacitors are draining I don't know but once that gauge fills up your lasers stop working. This one also has no shields so your ass is cooked. You have shields. Now if we try and shoot him with normal lasers there we go. Use your anti-shield laser to remove them. Yep, we got it. We got it. It's actually a pulse laser by the look of things. Now Just change back to conventional lasers to destroy a target. Not really sure what the difference is. I'm guessing their frequency is different. Target remain. Cool, let's go. Beautiful. Now change back to to destroy target. Nice. Now you'll notice on our heads up display, on the right there, we actually have another meter, similar to our laser charge meter. That indicates how many rounds we have left um, when it comes to missiles and whatnot. And now missiles, you don't get a lot of them. And what you have in the mission is what you have. You usually only get two or three missiles of each type. And there isn't a huge amount of types. But missiles are devastating in this game. Especially when you use them properly. Absolutely devastating. Which is good. Come on, game. Load. Right. Weapons. Intermediate. Let's go. Drone craft will act as slow-moving targets in this training mission close to the planet Fortuna. Fortuna. You will be required to follow their course, attempting to destroy them using your conventional lasers. The drones will be protected by shields. Consequently, anti-shield lasers will also be required in order to break down their defenses. Once all drones are destroyed, a jump gate will appear. Well, excellent. Enter the jump gate to complete the mission. You got a boss. Fortuna, eh? wonder if they have a lot of cats on that planet. Right, let's get out into the black, boys. Locate Let's go. All drone craft. Yeah, we're on it. Ah, this guy's got shields. That's cool. That target has shields. Use your anti-shield laser to remove Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on it. I'm on now it. Let's go make the farmer proud, target. shall we? Two targets remain. As long as we don't have to wear a t-shirt saying uh, submissive and breedable, daddy's going to be very happy with us. There we go. Look at that. Almost as if we're professional. Almost. Look, dude, I know how to destroy spaceships, alright? I'm very well versed in destroying spaceships. I've been doing this since, I don't know, 1998. I actually know when this game came out. I can't remember. We got it, we got it. How many is left? Yeah, you'll notice like a lot of the missions. Wow, that was fast. A lot of the missions are really quick as well. They don't last long. Sometimes there's more loading involved than there is actually like destroying <laughs> the targets. But hey, that's just the way these old games were. And that's okay. That's okay.
Right, so weapons advanced. Last one. In order to learn advanced weapon handling techniques, you will be required to destroy a disused fleet craft and a number of drones. Okay. The drones will behave as though they are defending the fleet ship. Using missile and torpedo weapons, target and destroy the craft. Then enter the jump gate to complete the mission. Sounds fairly straightforward. So, capital ship combat. These uh, capital ships are pretty big boys. And they have devastating weapons. But it's surprising in this game. This is one of the things that I find quite surprising. Is fighters seem almost overpowered in this game. So here's our training cruiser. You can see it's got shields. Right, so now we have torpedoes. We've got tracker missiles, which are basically homing weapons. And we have plasma torpedoes. Now, torpedoes are dumb fire weapons, so they're good against capital ships. So, there she goes. Oh, that's so satisfying. That's so satisfying. Oh, God, apparently we're ramming debris. Alright, so. We've got two missiles. Let's light these guys up. Now, tracker missiles aren't great against shields. So, we're going to strip their shields off. And then give them a missile. Come on, baby. There we go. Got your ass tracked. Good night. Now, Mission and training program complete. nice. Report for duty. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Now, you can see the jump gate here, but because it's over the planet, it's very hard to see. Um, yeah, so missiles are super, super devastating in this game. And tactical use of missiles can make or break missions quite easily. But I'm going to have to leave it here, guys. And when we come back, we're going to start the story. And I, for one, cannot bloody wait. I really can't. Really hyped. I think we're probably going to go through and get the best ending. And then we'll fill out all the other endings as we go. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.